Well, good morning, and um, thank you uh, for joining us here this morning. I am joined by the uh, members of the Senate Republican Caucus. Uh, although we're not in the majority, we represent a significant number of the people uh, in this state who are very concerned about, uh, about our state. As you can see, we care deeply about the health of our citizens and the safety of our citizens. Uh, but we also care deeply about the livelihood and the health of their livelihood uh, in this state. Uh, we have called, and today we are calling on again, uh, the governor and the Senate and the House uh, to do what they need to do to fulfill their elected responsibility uh, for the people they represent. Now, we understand that if the General Assembly couldn't meet, there are powers that the legislature has given the governor to enact in an emergency way. But over the past few days in this week, we have proven that the Illinois General Assembly can meet in an effective and a safe way. And it's time for us uh, to use our positions in the General Assembly, what the people elected us do, to have a discussion and to come to a conclusion in a bipartisan way, along with the executive office, about how we move this state, its people, and its economy forward safely. It's time for us to convene on these matters, as well as the other matters we're discussing this week. We've proven we can do it, and we're calling on the General Assembly, the leaders of the General Assembly, and the governor uh, to have a discussion like we do on budgets, uh, like we do on other programs that we implement, uh, so that the people can hear the legislature speak, as it's supposed to do, and not just the media. Uh, this discussion needs to go beyond 2.30 in the afternoon press conferences, and we have a duty and an obligation to represent the people, and we're calling on the General Assembly, its leaders, and the governor to provide that venue so that we can make collective decisions about how we re-engage Illinois' economy in a safe way uh, for its citizens and the people we represent. We'd be happy to respond to any questions. We, right now. We've called on it. We called on the General Assembly to convene. We were successful in getting that done. Now we're calling on us to take up the actions we wanted to take up in addition to the actions we're taking up now. The plan you're referring to is an initiative by the Illinois State Chamber of Commerce. It, it clearly checks the governor's authority uh, and, and works just the opposite. There are some misinterpretations clearly out there, but it is the chamber's plan. It checks the governor's authority. We need to check the governor's authority. That's what we're elected to do. He needs to lead from his podium. We need to lead from ours, but we need to have the opportunity to have that discussion. Uh, in the spirit of, and I, I would say this, no one has worked harder than the governor through this pandemic. Um, and I think the 2.30 press conferences have been a good thing. But we need more than 2.30 press conferences. We need the legislature. We don't need a show. We need the legislature uh, to come to terms uh, in a bipartisan way uh, with the governor about how we re-engage this. If we couldn't meet, if it was unsafe to meet, that's a different matter. But it is safe to meet. We're here meeting. We need to do our jobs. Exactly. We don't we should not go home until we come up with a bipartisan, a plan that the legislature and the governor work on to re-engage this state. The people of Illinois expect it and they deserve it. Maybe this question is from Jim Lee from WMAY. Can you identify specific areas of the budget that you might cut? Or are you proposing across the board reduction? You know, we we understand that there is probably never been a time in the history of our state 
that it needs its government more than it does during this pandemic. We have had working groups, and I applaud the working groups that we've had working over the last several weeks or months, who have worked on how we can contrive a budget. We continue to work on that. There will be another meeting when we leave this press conference. We're still going to arrive. We want to make sure that the people of Illinois who need their government to be there for their, to provide essential services, but we also want to protect the taxpayers uh, as we work through this process. I'm not sure you, I understand, but we're not playing both sides of the fence. Uh, we want a meaningful budget, realizing the pandemic crisis that we have, but we, we want it to be responsible, and we're working in a bipartisan way to do that. Uh, and we're, we're going to continue to do that. But we also, again, know that there's only one way we're going to have fiscal sanity in this state, and that is to re-engage our economy as fast as we can and as safely as we can. And there are a lot of people we represent who are asking, why does the governor prohibit us from doing this and that? That's why we need this discussion. It shouldn't just be the governor making these decisions. If the General Assembly couldn't meet safely, that's a different story. But we have to fight to re-engage our economy as fast as possible, or we're never going to have fiscal responsibility in this state. I'm not satisfied and the people we people behind me aren't satisfied because the people we represent expect us to work with the governor. We need to have that discussion. Now, he may do more and I hope he does because I th we believe there's more that can be done safely. But we've got till his next executive order on the 28th. We've got time for meetings and hearings. That's what the people deserve, transparency, and that's what they expect. So uh, we want to have a dialogue and a debate about what needs to be done using science, using health care, uh, but understanding that we've got to re-engage this economy as fast as possible. I talked to the governor yesterday. I've talked to him a couple times. He listens and then he goes with his experts and he does what he wants. That's not a debate. That's not a discussion like we're used to and the people expect us to have whether it be a committee forum or an assembly, but that's not what they expect. Our constituents elected us to be part of this process, to represent them in government. We are a democracy. Democracy means we are elected as in a republic to represent the people we are elected to represent. We need that opportunity to have that discussion. That's what we're calling for. We wouldn't be here if we didn't. Absolutely. We know our colleagues on the Democratic side of the aisle share our concerns. We know that they'd like to have more weigh in. We saw it yesterday or the week earlier this week with JCAR, when JCAR stepped in in a bipartisan fashion to stop something that we knew was wrong. Uh, we need more than JCAR in this instance. We need government to work. We've got, an, uh, uh, even on a simple majority, we've got until the end of the month to do the work we need to do. We've proven we can do it safely. We're here to do it safely, and we want to do it safely. Do you have any chance of stopping this uh, new plan through, or hope to stop the whole five minutes plan through the Senate today? We think it's a very egregious uh, proposition that's passed over to us that puts every voter's vote at risk. The, the value of a vote is, is based on one person, but the fraud and the, um, the consequences in this system. Now, we believe everyone should have a great access and a great right to vote. We want to provide that. But we will be discussing on the, how, on the Senate floor today uh, about why we believe this bill is an overreach, uh, over egregious, and I think we'll have a very good debate, and I think we'll have some very good points that will be brought up today uh, that we hope will be convincing to the Democrats about what an overreach this is. We already have some of the easiest vote-by-mail procedures in the country that have greater 
greater policies, not good enough if you ask me in some cases, but greater policies to prevent fraud. This just opens the door for rampant fraud, diminishing the value of everyone's vote, and we'll discuss that on the Senate floor. I think we'll have a good debate and a discussion on the Senate floor today about that, and I'll leave it to that. Do you think that the budget plan will pass today, and if so, will it pass all year? It's impossible to predict revenues right now, right? We don't know what the federal government will do from a stimulus package. We're not even sure what borrowing is available. We need a spending plan, and we're working with the Democrats to create a spending plan today. Uh, whether we can come to a conclusion that's successful and bipartisan, uh, remains to be proven, but we're willing to roll up our sleeves and work. The people of Illinois need a budget. We need to open schools, and we need to do the things that are important uh, to the people of Illinois. What are your non-negotiables in a budget that you thought that budget was going to be? You know, I, we'll leave that to the negotiations, uh, but I, I, there are several that we are, and we'll, we'll discuss those as they come forward. Thank right? right? Thank you. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.